Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra. And um, today we're going to talk about um, basically, are we a machine? Are we pre-programmed? Um, or we have our own free will and we can choose what to do? Um, or everything is simply a program and we're operating from this program. So we're going to get into that and talk about it. Um, for the moment, we're just gonna do a meditation. Those of you who've been with me, um, you know the drill. We are simply going to turn our attention inwards and look within. And one of the ways you can do this is uh, very easy. You simply follow your thoughts, whatever you're thinking. You follow your thoughts back to the source and uh, see where, where do your thoughts come from? Where do they originate from? And follow your thoughts to their source and almost immediately your mind become, becomes quiet. You can try it. It's very, very simple. You close your eyes and pay attention to your thoughts, if there is any, and just follow them inwards and observe for yourself where do they come from. And as you do this, you're in this process, your mind becomes quiet. So go ahead and do that. And take a deep breath and relax into this moment. Hang in there. Take a deep breath. Where do the thoughts come from? It's not a mental process, it's simply an investigation. You're investigating and you're looking within and see what happens.
slowly, slowly come. That was a good meditation. It was deep. Felt really good. So we um, go inwards and we dive into this very quiet place. The mind becomes quiet and everything else disappears. And, and those moments or whatever time that you're in this deep meditation, your problems are no longer there. They disappear. And then the conscious mind comes back, this other part we uh, reconnect with it and um, the world and its problems and our issues, everything reappears. But in that period of time, none of it is there. So in other words, I mean, what does it show to us? I mean, what does it indicate? It's the indication of, um, of this, that when the mind is quiet and you've gone beyond your mind and you dive into this state, deep state of silence, and then your problems are gone, your concerns aren't there. And then when you reemerge and the thought process comes back, the mind starts to get activated, then everything else, all the issues and the problems reappear. So if you just look at this part and you don't necessarily have to uh, agree on anything else, but you're just looking at this section, this part, um, objectively and it becomes and you're practicing this means that you sit in meditation your mind goes into you go beyond the mind you become silent there are no thoughts problems gone and then mind comes back and problems come with it and you look at it objectively you will see that basically your problems and what troubles you and disturbs you, it has a direct connection to your stream of thoughts. The stream of thoughts come back and problems reappear. They appear to be real. Just like that. But when you're in deep meditation and your mind is quiet or no thoughts, then you have no concerns. So then the next question comes that, well, I wish I could stay in this state, in this deep meditative state all the time because it's blissful, it's quiet and my problems aren't there and I'm not engaged with the world. Um, yeah, exactly. Any questions, any comments, anybody?
So we had one of our participants uh, send me a message, um, basically um, wanted me to answer some of the questions. Uh, and one of the questions is, are we just a machine? Um, and the answer is yes. Basically, we are a pre-programmed uh, machine. We've been programmed as we were born. And uh, basically all our behaviors, everything we do, our reactions, our fears, our worries, um, our talents, intelligence, everything that we possess, positive or negative, and you're experiencing in this life, all of it is pre-programmed. None of it is really what you decide to do or feel or think or behave in a certain way. It's all pre-programmed. And that's kind of like, wow, you know, because uh, where did this come from? It's very difficult to accept it, especially for the mind. Because when I say this, you're gonna have thoughts and you're gonna, you're gonna say, well, how, how could that be? You know, it's, it's not, it's impossible because I choose what to do. I decide uh, what to do, where to go, what to eat, whether I come and sit here and listen to you today or not. That's what your mind will say. And uh, there's another question says, what are we working on? Uh, well, you're just, what happens is the, we, we, to, to understand this, you have to go a little bit beyond um, this area that basically I have free will or I don't have free will. This is completely pre-programmed um, or not. You kind of need to go beyond that is understanding beyond uh, this particular con uh, subject. Uh, there's a few different things. A is to understand that these are all concepts. So this is this also is a concept of whether I have free will or it's destiny. This everything I explain is also a concept. Anything else you in spiritual world that you read and you analyze and you talk about is also a concept all of it. For example, let's go to pseudo spirituality, which is being taught today. And it's very, very popular about that. Um, you have the power of manifesting. And it is your brain, your thoughts, and it's very powerful. And whatever you start thinking, and focusing on gets manifested because you are also God and you are co-creator. You're partners with God and you are creating, co-creating with God. And that's wonderful concept. It's amazing. Wow, I'm co-creator. I'm partners with God and I can use the power of my thoughts in order to manifest and create. And consequently, what happens, there are times that uh, you are, you think of things, something keeps coming up for you and it happens. Or you think of somebody and uh, when you're, you're, 
in the US, you think of somebody who is in India or in Japan, and uh, 30 seconds after that person calls you out of nowhere, and they tell you they've been thinking about you. And uh, so it reinforces this whole concept that I have the power to manifest and uh, I'm partners, I'm co-creating with God. So that too is also a concept. And it depends on where we're at in our spiritual growth, our, it, where we're at um, in our evolution or where, um, what is your destiny? Let's put it this way. How your destiny has been written, you gravitate towards one of these concepts or more than one and you go in that direction and you adopt one of them and you live based on that the okay for example um i have spoken about stillness and being still, being quiet. So the more you're still, the more your mind is in silence. You're in this place. The more you're quiet, the more you are not uh, identifying with the pendulum of life. And then the question comes, one of our, our participant is asking me, well, you're telling us to be still. And is this to be still? Do I have, a, do I have any free will to be still and to be silent or not? And my answer would be no. You, you can't even be still or be silent not out of your own free will. If it's not written, if it's not a part of your program, you won't be able to do it. You can only do that and come to that place if it's a part of your program. So then comes another question. It says, well, um, so what's the meaning of this? What does this mean? I mean, if we're a pre-programmed machine, and what's the point of it, of living on a planet and doing whatever we're doing? And uh, in a way, a lot of people may say, well, I'm going to lose my motivation because then I won't do anything. I'm just gonna sit home and not do anything. So let me answer the first part of it. The first part of it, when we talk about, um, so what's the meaning of all of it? What does this mean? That if we're all this 7 billion people let's say supposedly there is 7 billion, which we don't even know that because all you hear is a number, but you never get to see the 7 billion people. So you hear a number and you're going based on that number. But let's say they, they're there and none of them have any free will, none of them, uh, are in charge of what they're doing, then it's the grand intelligence that runs the show, is managing the entire existence, is running through 
these people running through us. And so the question is like, well, what does it mean then for what? Why, why would, why are we here then? If I don't have any free will and I don't have anything to say, then what's the point? Well, that is looking at it from one point of view. But when you look at it from a different angle is that this existence of this guy is an expression. It's an expression of the oneness. It's an expression of the absolute. And there's a guy who was born, named Zarathustra, and he's doing whatever he's doing at whatever period of time. And this guy is an expression of life. Same as you, whatever you're doing. So let's say you're a mommy or you were a mom. And when your kids were growing up, you did whatever mom would do and helping him, getting educated and training him and being a mother. And that was, or that is the expression of the absolute. Existence is expressing itself in you as a mom and you're growing your helping your children to grow, or you're a nurse, or you're, you're an author, or you are a bus driver, whatever you're doing, or you're a healer. That's what the oneness is experiencing. It's experiencing being a mom, experiencing being a child experiencing being a soldier, experiencing um, being a truck driver. It's experiencing all these different things simultaneously. Being a good person, being a bad person. The good person and the bad person, they're both the same. They're the different expressions of the same oneness. Like you have a coin. This coin has two sides. You're looking at this side, you're looking at that side. Coins have two sides. So, in this manifest world, in this world that is manifested, everything has its opposites. So whatever amount of goodness is in this world, equally there is evil created or vice versa. Whatever is manifested, the opposite exists too. But they're both the same. So you have one expression as, let's say, Jesus Christ, right? One expression of it. Of We're using Jesus Christ as a symbol, okay? So don't get hang up on that. You can say Krishna or Buddha whatever name you want to say, uh, Mother Teresa, whatever name you want to say, an expression of supposedly goodness and love and forgiveness and compassion, a saint, a sage, an enlightened being, a prophet, an expression of that. And then simultaneously, 
you're going to have an expression of the opposite of it. And let's say we're using Hitler as a symbol of darkness and evil. So existence comes and creates Christ on one side of the coin, and then Hitler is going to be on the other side of the coin. But they're both the same coin. One side has the Christ, the other side has Hitler. But they're both the same. They're no different. They're two different expressions of the same one. And for a lot of people, this is very, very difficult to digest. It's a very, very difficult concept to digest. And we can sit down and have days and days of argue, uh, discussion about it. Uh, some people may get very angry, but oneness means everything. If we say it's all one, it's all one means this oneness includes the dark and the evil, not just the good stuff, not just the goodies. All of it is a part of the oneness. That's what oneness means. So another part of the questions I receive, what is our own part and responsibility? Like, okay. You cannot not be responsible if that's not in your programming. If you're a person that basically feel responsible and you get up in the morning, you go to work, you clean your place, you pay your bills, you renew your auto registration, your auto insurance, you return phone calls, messages. Um, when you have an appointment, you feel like you need to be there on time. Um, you're generally a responsible person. That has nothing to do with having free will or not. That's just your programming. And you're going to, even if you come to this understanding, let's say you come to this realization and you come to understand, wow, there is no free will. I don't have any free will. Whatever I do is a part of my program. And there's peace is coming in your life because you're not freaking out or worrying so much about things in life because you can see you're not in control of it. So you're kind of settling into that. But then question may come, well, if I don't have any free will, then I'm not going to be responsible. Let something else does it. But you don't have a choice. So you don't have a choice not to be responsible and you don't have a choice to be responsible. Neither of them are your doing. You're not doing either of it. That which runs you, that which operates through you is either acting and demonstrating responsibility or not. It's not you doing it. So the more, the deeper you go into this, um, it doesn't give you a power to manipulate life because I've had students, clients, that they want to learn this teaching so they can manipulate life. No, it doesn't give you any edge as far as power of being able to, because 
a part of the mind is, yeah, if I really master this, then I can create or I can do something that I can get what I want. So no, this teaching is not going to give you that. But what it will give you is as you relax into it, so you may start to see that there's an order in this chaos, in this world that it appears to be very aggressive or volatile. It's got all these ups and downs, and at times it's really scary. And as you are losing this sense that you're in control and you have any free will and you got any power into it, as you're kind of shifting from that, so you're powerless. In that powerlessness, you begin to see that there's an order, there's a force that is running through everything. And you start to see it, you start to notice that. And that force that is running through everything, as you're starting to become less powerful, less in control, you're letting go, you begin to notice this force that runs things. And you begin to see that this force also is feeding you and taking care of you. You're putting food on the table. It looks like you're doing it. You're the one who gets up and goes to work and bringing money or taking care of things. But you start to see like you're not doing it. Your body's doing it, but you're not really doing it yourself. Something else creates circumstances to feed you. You start to see that something else is responsible for taking care of you. You begin to see it. You begin to see that order that if one door closes and you're losing your income in one way and then another door opens up and it starts giving you an income somehow in a very magical way which is beyond the mind's understanding the mind says cannot understand it because the mind is trying to be logical so it doesn't get it. Well, how is that going to happen? How is that possible? That one door closes and another door opens without me putting any efforts in it. But it does. It does. One door closes and another one opens up because that which has created you is the same force that is responsible to take care of you because you didn't create yourself you didn't create this world you have no say here as much as you would like to you have nothing to do with any of this there's nothing you can do about it or change it unless it wants to use you to change something, but you have nothing to say. You're powerless. You're just a character. You're one of the images that appears in this vastness to do your part. It's just, you have this thought in your mind. It's a thought that you exist as a separate entity, as a separate person, and you can have an impact or you can do something, but that doesn't exist. 
It's just a thought. It's just a sense that you can. But you can't. You have no control over any of it. Zero. You have no control over things happen. You academy ends, you get out of your apartment, you're walking across the street. All of a sudden, a motorcycle runs into you, car hits you. You're crossing the street, all of a sudden you have a heart attack. Or you're crossing the street and all of a sudden you meet the love of your life. And your life completely changes because you just met the love of your life. You have no control over any of these things. You don't have any control about what the weather is going to be like. You know, maybe all of a sudden there's thunders and rain comes. You didn't create that. You thought everything is going in this direction and you have figured out everything because in past 70, 80 years, that's what you've been doing. You have figured things out and all of a sudden COVID-19 happens and your life is upside down and you can't leave your home for one year. Your kids don't want to come and see you. Your grandkids don't want to come and see you. And you're isolated like a prisoner for one year and you had no idea you're going to be a prison. So did I create that? So all of a sudden I start getting dizzy and for a few days or a week, I'm really dizzy. And I go see Dr. Jones and they do an MRI or whatever. And they're gonna come and say, Zarathustra, you have a level four cancer and we're giving you three months to live. There's nothing we can do about it. In three months, you're going to be dead. And it happens. So how much of that did I create? I don't know. I mean, then we can come up with this other concept. Now we're using another concept. Well, Zaratustra, you created this in some level that you're not aware. You created it. Okay, that's a concept, that's a belief system. You can believe in it if you want. If it resonates with you and it tickles your fancy and you think like, wow, then you can believe in that. That too is a concept. because you don't really know. And the same concept can say, well, yeah, I created my parents. I created this life. I chose this in some level, but I don't know of anybody who has a recollection of before they were born that they remember they're in this waiting room with their inner guru or God, and they're giving them a list of the things going to happen in their lives, or, or I'm consciously choosing my dad, my mom, the country I was going to, I'm going to be born in, and consciously, I have no recollection of any of these things. I mean, if one of you does, as clearly as you live this life, yeah, please let me know, enlighten me. I like to know. So how much control do I have over that? And yeah, it's scary to 
it's exciting and it's scary. It depends where you're at with yourself because you have this sense inside yourself that you're separated. There's this sense built inside us that you're the author of your own life. You're the one who writes the book. So you choose what to do. And this is, if your life is messed up, it's your it's your doing you chose these things you made these mistakes and that's why you are where you're at so you keep blaming yourself and beating yourself up because you screwed up to get to where you're at you made the wrong choices you married the wrong people you made bad business decisions, you lost money, whatever has happened brought you to this point. So you keep blaming yourself and you start taking therapy to work on your shortcomings because you screwed up and trying to fix it. For me, the more I realized the grace of my teacher that there is no me, yet there is this sense of it. But the more I dove into it, the more it becomes clear that A, there is no others. There's no enemy except what it appears to be. So the cruelness of life, that life which is very cruel, it begins to lose its power of something scary because it can't scare you because you start seeing it as your own self or as God as totality and in that your surrender begins to come surrendering into what is and starting to see like okay looks like i'm taken care of because Somehow, I'm always taken care of. I mean, that's my experience. There's a lot of homeless people in Venice, where I live. There's a lot of, we have a huge problem with homeless. And they're on the street, but somehow I'm not on the street. And I've made a lot of mistakes. And things have happened to me that I could easily be on the street too, but somehow something doesn't want me to be on the street and wants me to be here. Something's feeding me, something takes care of me. And yeah, a lot of times in the form of someone else, somebody else comes and helps you. But didn't someone else help you to get to where you're at? How did you get to where you're at? How many of us have become financially successful? Let's talk about money. That from nothing, from zero, means you didn't inherit any money. Your parents didn't leave you any money. Your wife, your husband didn't leave you any money. You started, you know, you had nothing. From zero, you made it to be very comfortable. How many people do you know that they made it that way? Most 
people in life, somebody gave them something. They inherited or they married to money. So they got help. Or emotionally, you were supported. Emotionally, you got help. Intellectually, you got helped. So, some you were really down, you were at the worst point in your life, you were in this deep darkness, you thought you're going to kill yourself, you thought your life is going to come to en the en end, and somehow, magically, something showed up in your life, whether you got a book, somebody gave you a book, you found a book in a bookstore, and you opened it, and you started reading it, or you went to a workshop or someone in one of the members of your family showed up in your life or one of your friends or kids showed up in your life and they help you or you went to AA or uh, you found this support group. Something happened in your life magically when you absolutely were desperate and help you to switch and be safe. So, I started to see this through the grace of my teacher. And I started to see this line that runs through everybody. And this magic that is like a mat. There are these invisible hands that the job is to feed. There are these invisible hands that feed everybody. It's feeding itself because it created all these beings. It's its own creation. It's operating through all these beings. So it has to support it itself. It feeds itself. Yet it appears to be that you are doing it. It looks like it. It feels that way. That you and I am taking care of myself, but that's not true. It takes care of me. And even if you come and understand it and find out, most of the time you continue doing what you were doing. Just because you came to understand it, it doesn't mean you're no longer going to be responsible. You'll continue following your program. It can change, but it's unlikely. Most of the time when even you realize that you're not the one who's doing it, you're still operating out of the old program of being responsible but you're not attached to it. And when you're not responsible, you don't beat yourself up. Any questions? Anybody? So in another way, I can say, yes, it is a machine. You are a machine that's been completely programmed to behave in a certain way. 
from the beginning to the end. Because look at it, you were born and through your parents, and so you inherited their DNA. Genetically, you're going to have whatever the clan from each direction, their genes are gonna be transferred to you. So, and, and then you were born wherever you were born. If, you, if you're born in an Islamic country, a very severely um, fanatic Islamic country, you're going to be a different person and behave differently in comparison that if you were born in, let's say, uh, a very open-minded society, you were born in Scandinavia or Germany, or um, so your way of thinking is completely different. You're exposed to a different religion if you were, different way of thinking. Or if you were in, born in Jamaica, or South America, or in China, or some village in Philippines. So your environment is going to affect you. You're going to be affected by, besides your genes, you're going to be affected by the environment. And then how your parents are. Were you born in a wealthy family, which is well-traveled and they're academics, they're into studying, or are you born into a very basic family? It's in a village and they're always dealing with survival or they're fighting the other villages and or they're farmers or they're scientists, it depends. So now you're going to be this person based on where you landed and the culture and you're growing up. You're born in an Islamic country, uh, which is very much practicing and they're really traditional and they have their prejudice. So now you're expecting women to be covered and alcohol is not it, uh, accepted or you were born in Jamaica, for example, and it's people like to smoke marijuana and it's perfectly fine. And, and uh, the weather's warm. So most of the day you're half naked outside walking around. And then it's okay to have some rum here and there. So it's, uh, so which one is good or bad? Which one is right or wrong? It's all based on how you've been conditioned. So how much choice did you have over that? Did you decide on that? Or how about if you're born and you're, you have some physical problems, genetically you have born, born with deformity. How much choice did you have over that? Did you manifest it? Did you want to be born deformed and experience life like that? Is that something you chose before you were born? Uh, if you have a choice, wouldn't you want to have an IQ like Albert Einstein? Don't you want to have a body like Michael Jordan who can fly in the air? Don't you? want to have a very healthy, powerful, athletic, good-looking body and a very intelligent mind? Wouldn't you want to have a great heart with a lot of love in it and everybody loves you? See, we deeper... The deeper we go into the rabbit hole, the more interesting it gets. And it makes you think, it makes you pay attention to stuff. 
you know, because it gets you out of the box. We're so conditioned, hypnotized in looking at things only in one certain way. And we got used to it. And this certain way has serv been serving us. And most of us are not open to anything else. So we get to a certain point in our lives because you have to fail. And a lot of times we do. Failure happens. Dis disappointment happens. And it forces us to think outside of the box. It forces us to look at things differently because you're not getting what you want. Things aren't going your way. And it creates a situation that you question stuff. Hi, Karen. Did you cut your hair off? Yeah, you there? You have short hair? Oh my God. You cut all of your hair. Yeah. Right. Let me see. Turn around. Oh, wow. So, okay, you have short hair now. Let's see, how is that? Easier? Are you there? Can you hear me? Uh, it will be nice when uh, huh? I didn't hear anything you said. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I, you, you know, maybe you, maybe you, maybe you type it to me on the chat box no. because I, because uh, okay. I don't hear you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, any questions, anybody, any comments? Nothing? Are you yeah. hiding out? Don't worry, I'm not gonna beat you up. I, I can, this can, okay, great. You, you hi. 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 hi, hi, Candace. So you went short, you went short too, huh? Yeah, in the summer. <laughs> right, summer. Okay. Um, I'm so glad you're talking about this. It's really great. And um, so, so things that have happened in my life, none of it was my fault, right? That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. I mean, we couldn't right. have helped it. That's all how it happened. And yeah, it's very liberating. Yeah. <laughs> None of your accomplishments are yours or your failures. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. yeah. The, of course, the ego wants to claim all the accomplishments as me. Look at me. Look at me. I'm, wow, I'm wonderful. Yeah. That's a part of us wants to go there. And then uh, the more you go, the deeper you come to this understanding. And the more you start to realize that none of it is you. And it, yeah. So then what happens is creates an opportunity to go deeper into the silence, because you realize, okay, all this thing that I'm giving a hard time to myself and I'm beating myself up for all my mistakes, where are they? They're just thoughts, aren't they? You're thinking about it and you're blaming yourself. But if you're not thinking, so you're in silence, there's no thoughts. Peace comes, bliss comes. So we call it mind fucking. 
basically. And I have a lot of friends that they're in this process constantly. They're blaming themselves for the things they've done. I mean, some of them I get together and they just go on and on and on. And I have to kind of stop them. It's like, okay, I don't want to talk about this anymore. Let's, let's enjoy the hike. Let's enjoy this moment. Let's not get out of here. And then you're on a beautiful hike in the nature. And what happens is the nature reflects back your inner silence. So you become quiet. You dive into this place. And your mind goes away. And these issues, these things that you're so worried about go, go away too. And if you have the training and the understanding, then you catch yourself every once in a while, which is also a part of the program too. None of it is like you're doing it. But when the understanding comes and reveals itself, your life, changes in that way because peace comes it doesn't give you a power to make money or manipulate people to get what you want no what it does it surrender comes and then it becomes peaceful acceptance comes you're accepting there's another interesting part is the deeper you go into the understanding Somebody send us a message. Okay, there's a question. Somebody's asking. Uh, we have a question here. Man, what about soul evolution? Does the soul evolve? through experiences. So, yeah, it appears, there's an appearance. It appears that we're evolving. It looks like it. There's an appearance that it looks like we're evolving. But, at the very core, that which has always been here is already complete. But in the world of appearance like this, it appears that we're evolving. It looks like it. But when you go in deep silence and you sit here and you're here and you're not thinking, you're in deep silence, then who's evolving? See, this whole idea about, let's say, I'm in control of my life and I'm the one who manifests things. So I have the power with my thoughts. I can create things, attract good or bad things because I'm using the power of my thoughts. Okay, so this idea, this concept versus this other idea, this concept that there is no free will and there's nothing you can do about any of it. So aren't they both concept thoughts? You're thinking of something. But when you go into deep silence and you're completely still and you're silent, there's no mind. Everything disappears.
none of none of these things exist anymore and there's nobody there paying any attention to any of it because there's no thoughts there has to be thoughts for someone like you or me to exist if there's no thoughts then where is zarathustra i mean there's a body that operates but where is this whole story of the person of me this is my life i need to take care of it i really need to worry about it i'm i'm really worried about the future of the world oh my god what's going to happen where is this going to go all of it is because of thoughts and that thought originates from the me the i thought me being a separate entity because I'm separated from the world, now I need to worry about the world. But I am the world. So worry about what part of it? It's all itself. How can I worry about it? I only worry about it when I come into this position of separateness. I'm separated from it, so I'm worried about it. But when I'm not thinking and I'm one with it, so there's no thoughts of worrying about anything. So what happens to the worry? So where does the world go? The world's not going to go anywhere. It's always here. Nothing's going to happen to it. So you don't need to worry about the world. It's always here. It's always been here and it's always going to be here. It's not going to go anywhere. It changes its shape, but it doesn't go anywhere. It's here. Life's not going to end. Life is. It's always been. So you don't need to worry about the future of planet Earth. First of all, you're not going to be around for that because the planet's been around for billions of years and it's going to be around for another, I don't know, how many million years and you won't be here. So don't worry about it. You don't need to sit down and concern yourself about it. You're only here for another 30, 40 years. So don't worry about planet Earth. Don't waste your time trying to figure it out. It's wasting your time. Hi, Donna. Are you all right? Do you want to unmute yourself? You can unmute yourself and we can talk directly, and that way uh, others can hear what you're saying if you are okay with that. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi. 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 Yeah. Hi. Thank you. You answered my question. Oh, I did? Um, okay. You did. I just had, I mean, I, I, I know what you're saying in the sense that when I go into the deep silence, 
there's almost like there's nothing that compares to that. Like everything is so full there. You know, there's no thought. It's just full. It's kind of empty and full at the same time. If that makes sense. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Um, but I did have a question of, uh, do we have, is there any purpose in being here? You know how the ego mind likes to think of purpose? So I wondered, or do we create, we just make that up? No, the, the purpose of it is that existence is living through you mm. and experiencing the, the dimensions. Mm. That's the purpose of it. That's what yeah. it does. Yeah. I mean, the big kahuna is living through you and being dana and experiencing whatever dana is experiencing. That's mm -hmm. what it wants to do. Mm -hmm. And whatever that you desire, like you want to accomplish something, is that's what it is desiring through you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So... That's its purpose. Mm -hmm. So in understanding that, what happens is you relax into your natural way of being, your energy. You relax into what is running through you. Like if you're a very energetic person, then you relax into that. If you're a person who is easy going and it says okay i mean you know for now i'm going to take care of it later let it just be then your mind you're not entertaining your in your mind to beat you up that why aren't you like your sister who's very energetic and is a go-getter and i'm not a go-getter i'm more laid back and chills so you begin to recognize that and you relax into it mm -hmm. and in that relaxation into your natural state then everything is also taken care of mm -hmm. everything takes care of itself mm -hmm. but in your style mm -hmm. that makes yeah that makes sense so when then we can say that or one can say that suffering is when you're out of that state. You're out of the flow of who you are. Or, yeah, in a way, yes. Hmm. Yeah, suffering. Or you go in your mind and you go to the past and you are entertaining your mistakes and you're beating yourself up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or you're bringing that from the past and projecting it into the future and you suffer. Mm -hmm. So again, all of it is thoughts. Mm -hmm. Thoughts of going to the past and entertaining what happened and blaming yourself, which is thoughts in your mind or thoughts going into the future which again, it's the past is being projected into the future and creating fear or worry, anxiety, and then suffering comes. It's mm -hmm. all related to, it's all because of thoughts. Thoughts, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why we're emphasizing so much in practicing being silent or mm -hmm. going beyond the mind And then, as you mentioned, you experience the fullness of, of the being. Mm -hmm. And it's vast, and it's quiet, and it's blissful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. where, where are you from, Donna? I'm in South Jersey, in the United States. Uh, South, and, so, uh, and, on the beat, South Jersey. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. South and you've been on this academy before? It's your no, no, I haven't. I was just, I, I saw the, um, uh, you know, the email last night, and it looked appealing. So I thought, oh, let me join in. I have seen some of your work before, and I've also been in 
you know, my own non-dual programs in which I've been a student for a very long time. So I resonate with your work. Mm. Mm. Right. Right. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. If you ever get a chance, maybe you watch some of the videos of Ramesh Balsakar Mm. or Ramana Maharishi. Mm. I mean, David Godman has a, a series of narratives talking about uh, Ramana, Ramana Maharishi. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's oh. a lot of amazing uh, Advaita Vedanta teachers from back back in the day, the big ones. Mm. And it's very nice to refer to their teachings every once in a while. If yes. you want a if you want a variety, mm. yes, thank you. Mm. Mm. Well, welcome. Thank you for thank you, thank you for uh, yeah. answering my question. I appreciate it. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll see you again. Yes, thank you. Can you have Priya? Okay, so we have a message here. It says, it's not to think, but to sense it. Yeah, that's, that's true. You sense it. I mean, I mean, ultimately, the, the bottom line is, I always like to keep it simple. And the simplicity of it is like, I mean, basically, what are we looking for? And, um, you know, whenever you get really caught up into all these spiritual concepts or stories and um, you're confused or you're in a discussion with someone else or you're reading a book and that book kind of throws you off or that teaching, um, ultimately come back to this place is a very very simple thing is that we you we all want to be happy at the end of the day we all want to be happy now we think being happy means things go my way so if i get the object of the desire i get what i really want that's going to make me happy. And so that's our programming. Because from childhood, we've been programmed to believe that happiness comes from getting what you want. But that happiness is basically temporarily because you get the object of your desire, whether it's a man or a woman, it's money, it's a it's a car, it's home, it's the job or ideal family or whatever it is, you finally get what you wanted. But that's going to just make you ha- keep you satisfied for a short period of time. Then you want something else. And you're working in that direction to try to manipulate things around you to get what you want. But what we want is really want to be happy. And happiness only comes from inner peace. You're not going to be happy if you don't have inner peace. So... Inner peace is basically what we want. We want to be in a state in our lives that there's no turmoil, internal internal turmoil. So we're thinking that if I get the object, if I get the car or the money or the house, I'm going to be happy because they want be internal turmoil but you may get the house and now you have tax issues and then 
something happens in the house or it's a really fancy house. Now you're worried that maybe somebody wants to break into the house and kidnap your kids. So that's still not happiness. The happiness you're looking for is to be in a state that there's no internal turmoils. You're at peace within yourself. It has nothing to do with the objects. Does it make sense? Yes, no, yeah. So it's the inner peace that we're looking for. That's where the treasures, the treasure is. That's what, that's the kingdom of the heaven. It's not the objects. So you work in that direction. And of course, as you're working in that direction, your intuition gets stronger or, or you begin to notice your intuitive knowing that reveals itself to you. Well, any other questions, comments, anybody would like to share anything or have any questions? No. Hi, Laura. Did you move to Miami? You were, I think. No. You were Hi, I thought you, you were moving to Miami, right? No. No, you no. were moving, you were moving somewhere. No? Okay. No, I'm I'm still in Los Angeles. Oh, still in Los Angeles. Okay. Well, nice to see you. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, for some reason, I thought you're moving. Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I actually haven't signed on in a long time. Well, it's nice to have you here. <laughs> nice to be here.
right. Who's that? Angun, did you want to talk to me? Were you waving at me? Yeah, no, yes. Go ahead. Um, right. Are you talking to me? Yeah, I thought you waved. You wanted oh, to. Oh, uh, I was just kind of looking at the chat box, <laughs> what was oh, standing okay. there. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah, thank you for this evening. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Uh, Rishka, with 5B healing, how can we heal our family? Yeah. Hi, hi, Rishka. Do you feel like unmuting yourself and talk to me or you prefer the, the chat box? Are you there? Uh, oh, Rishika Das. I'm sorry. Ri, Rishika, Rishika Das. Hi. No? I prefer chat. Okay. Hi. Uh, first of all, when I saw your name, I thought it was Krishna Das. So for one moment, I thought, wow, Krishna Das is visiting us today. <laughs> well, welcome. Um, all right. Let me go through with 5D healing. How can we heal our family? Um, I mean, that's a broad question. So I don't know. Um, that's, I don't know how, I, I don't know what to answer because, uh, what are we talking about? Are we talking about physical healing or emotional healing, um, using fifth dimensional quantum healing? How do we heal our family? Well, And then are we talking about uh, our direct family or our spiritual family? Uh, working with the family is a little bit tricky because a lot of times, a lot of us come from this background that we're the black sheep in the family and we're not, we have never been accepted as who we are and what we do. And we've been mocked and made fun of. So I don't know if this family you're talking about is open or not, but basically more than anything is to, it's the presence. What I've discovered with my direct family is uh, presence when I'm with them. Uh, I can't talk about these things because they're not open to it and they don't believe in it. Even though for years they've been seeing me doing what I'm doing, but they have no interest whatsoever in what I do. Uh, except sometimes they may get a little curious, but it's never like anybody coming to me and asking me, uh, to talk about any of these teachings. It has happened that uh, there's been pain or physical discomfort that the medical doctors could not help him. And out of desperation, they've asked me to do some healing work on him. Um, so with family, it's kind of very, it's kind of tricky because they don't really look at you uh, the way other people do, people who are into this world. Uh, so what I noticed personally for me is I keep my mouth shut and I don't say anything. I don't preach to them. I don't try to enlighten them. Um, I'm just a very ordinarily ordinary with them. But I also, in the meantime, don't go into the story, to their stories, their fears. They're worried about this and that. Whatever is the story which is happening, which is, whether it's a war or it's economic, uh, an economic crash or it's the COVID, whatever is the story, the topic of the day or the time, I don't get into it with them. I'm just there. 
So it's more of presence. Your presence changes things because if you have discovered inner peace within yourself and silence, then by just being somewhere, you're affecting your environment and you're affecting your family. You're bringing calmness to them. Somehow they're getting calm and quiet. Very well, we're coming to the end of our academy. I'd like to thank you all for being with me. Um, my pages, uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, they're all uh, Zaratustra 5D. That's the name of the page. Uh, my, you can email me at uh, it's info at zaratustra.tv as well as my website is zaratustra.tv. Uh, our next academy is going to be next uh, Wednesday. I'm going to do my best to be more, uh, as consistent as I can be. Uh, sorry, a couple of times we couldn't make it, but hopefully we're going to be sticking to every Wednesday and uh, be consistent. I look forward to seeing you. Feel free if you want to write to me. I'll be happy to respond to you. Sending you lots of love and light. Until next time. God bless. <laughs>